Welcome to another episode of our midweek conversation at First Baptist Sweetwater. My name is Jerry Hendricks, and I'm alongside my good friend, T. Hamilton. Hello, T. Hello, Jerry. We are coming to you by Zoom today, and uh, uh, it just shakes things up a bit. I mean, I guess it's okay, right? Yeah, works out for me. Okay, and uh, uh, each of us are in our office and uh, doing a little isolating uh, this week, but uh Anyways, it's, it's good to chat with you and uh, talk about things from last Sunday and look forward to next Sunday. So uh, I'm just curious, Dick, have you got your Christmas tree up yet? No. <laughs> well, I, uh, Sunday I've talked about that I know, several I heard people it. have, have uh, put up their Christmas trees. I thought you and Stacy would have already got yours up. No, there's still another holiday to come. I, I like the idea of having a holiday that like helps us be thankful and prepare for what's coming. And I hate skipping over that. So no. Well, uh, and you do remember that Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday of the year. Right. And you're yep. you're telling people to put up Christmas lights. Well, I'm just saying that I think it's the kind of year that we've had. Why not? Go ahead and enjoy it a little bit longer. And uh, nope. now uh, I noticed that there's not been one put up at my house yet. And so uh, and that's not to say that I don't help but I don't help. Well, we do a real Christmas tree, so they're not exactly out yeah. yet. They're not out yet, and uh, that extra two weeks or three weeks would be uh, pretty hard on them, too. Fire hazard. Yeah, for sure. Oh, man. Well, Sunday we talked about, I started uh, our conversation talking about a church in Cincinnati, Ohio, that was a church uh, that, uh, in, in fact, was uh, one of the 100 most influential churches in America, uh, number 15 uh, for the last century. And, uh, but I met the pastor of that church when we started Crosspoint mm -hmm. and was really intrigued by his idea of these uh, random acts of kindness. And uh, this was the second church that he had started with uh, that kind of evangelism strategy. And uh, his the mantra that the church used was small things done with great love can change the world. Yep. And so they just look for ways to demonstrate uh, throughout their community and neighborhoods, uh, demonstrate God's love in a variety of ways. And of course, Sunday, I use the illustration of how they, on Christmas Eve, rather than doing a candlelight service, they had uh, distributed uh, Krispy Kreme donuts throughout the community and uh, got to know people and share God's love that with people who are having to work on Christmas Eve. Right. Yeah, that's a great so, idea. Yeah, it's it's one that uh, that I think of. I, I actually I think of it every Christmas Eve, uh, but probably not none more clearly than uh, the year. There was one Christmas Eve here where uh, we I think weather was bad, or maybe no, it was on a, on a Saturday night, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so we were going to have church on the, on Sunday morning, and so we didn't stay with our kids nabbling. We stayed here, and so after the candlelight service, uh, we had a tree up and, and things like that in our house here, but we didn't have the gifts here. Right. So Sharon and I went to the truck stop on I twenty. And uh, had dinner after Christmas, a candlelight service, and you know, it's real. It was real interesting uh, when you look around. I mean, you, uh, I mean, you. I think you always see uh, interesting people at uh, the the truck stops because of the the variety of people that come down I twenty. Right. But particularly on a Christmas Eve night, uh, you know, you just you just kind of wonder what everyone's story is, and. Uh, you know, I thought about jumping up on the table and, and breaking out in Christmas carols, but I really don't do that well, uh, so I didn't. And you didn't want to be escorted out? Uh, try, but you don't know that I would have been escorted out. I mean, there is the possibility that it could have been that magical Hallmark moment, and everyone would have started just singing along with me and cheering, and we could have gone into the night singing Christmas carols. True. And now we know uh, a couple of the people who are managers there. So I'll follow up with them this week and find out what their policy is on jumping on tables and singing Christmas tables or Christmas. <laughs> well, uh, no need to do that. Don't worry about <laughs> that. But uh, we did uh, to follow up on that. We would uh, when we started uh, trying to experiment with different random acts of kindness. Uh, one of my favorites that we did uh, was uh, we would go to a car wash with rolls of quarters mm -hmm. and we would pay for people's car wash. 
Right. And then we would help them towel it off uh, after they finished washing their car. Sure. You get some strange reactions to that, that, you know, people, it's, it's hard for the people to go ahead and, and to drop their quarters <laughs> or their, drop their guard right. uh, because right. they just have so many questions that they, uh, it, there's too many questions to get through for them just to give you permission. But uh, that was one of the fun things that we did. Uh, and then when we moved our church to downtown Abilene, uh, we did a lot of things uh, in the community, partnering with uh, Keep Abilene Beautiful, right. things like that, where we took responsibility and ownership of our, our neighborhood, our community, and uh, we would uh, wash windows on abandoned buildings, and uh, we would regularly go and uh, weed the to get the weed out of the the, the uh, sidewalks and different things like that. So, and that kind of stirred other thoughts and eventually some ongoing ministries and way to do ministry uh, there while we were uh, doing uh, church in the coffee shop downtown. It goes back to that idea of the things the church can do to improve the quality of life in a town that maybe they're unseen and not no as noticeable, but it improves that quality of life for the residents of the town. I, I think so. And I'm excited uh, to be a part of a community now that I, I think has, is beginning to capture that vision. And I, when I say community, I'm not talking about uh, our church only, but I'm talking about uh, our, our local government and uh, local officials. There's people, I think, who are becoming excited about uh, our town and uh, wanting to do things that uh, really do make it a better place to live because when we do that we do have the opportunity uh, through that to share christ with people and uh just by by being uh christ-like in the world uh, you know sharing sharing god's love in some small ways yeah i love that idea uh, when you did that quote uh sunday that you just shared from the guy uh, little things done with great love change the world um i wrote that down that was good well i and I apologize. I wrote that down ahead for of ahead of time to give to you guys for the Facebook page, and I forgot to. I got busy and forgot to get that in your hands, but uh, it was there. I still got it in. I'm glad you got that in and and did that good work for us. But so we had, uh, you know, Sunday was, uh, you know, that time of year where we were kind of in that that spot where we are think we're mindful of the things that we're thankful for right. but we're also in that season in a church and an organization where uh, we're working on our budgets and we're thinking about ministry that uh, we have that are ongoing uh, this year it's, it's been one of those years where we've evaluated some of the things we're doing differently because of uh, being shut down for a while right. and uh, so you know we, it just kind of it becomes one of those points that for me annually one of those rallying points for us to think about, you know, what what we want to do to uh, to share God's love in, in the world and what our responsibility is, and then how we collectively share in that through the giving of our gifts. And so uh, I know in some places that's a, a hard conversation, but, you know, having been in business uh, for a while, I know that uh, that membership means something. And when you're a part of something that you believe in, that you support it, and contribute uh, to uh, that mission and that vision of that group. So uh, I enjoy, I really enjoy getting to talk about it and, and sort of really the economy, I guess, of, of how we're able to accomplish some of the things that we want to accomplish. Well, and you do a lot about um, helping people understand, helping me understand that the giving is part of us is a spiritual discipline. It's not, uh, it's part of your spiritual formation. It's not just giving because the Bible says so, it's giving because it's a part of who you are. It's part of generosity. It's part of growing with Christ. Um, and then being thankful at times that, you know, we talk about 10% a lot, but if you look at the Old Testament, it was like, what, 32 or 33%? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't go into a lot of that. I, I, I tend to keep that in front of us and, and, and mention that. I, I, I did, you know, uh, share in that conversation, and you might want to go back and listen to it uh, if you haven't listened to that already or watched it on YouTube. Uh, the word tithe is used in that uh, uh, text in Malachi, and I, I've never used that text. I've made reference to it, but I don't right. think it's, from my records, it was never my primary text. Mm -hmm. And um, as I began to, to grow in Christ and understand giving and what it meant to be generous in the same way that God is generous with us, uh, it just seemed to me that it's, it's like uh, uh, 
if you're a good student, it's like going in with the goal of making a C. Right. Now, that's unthinkable for a person like you. Right. And so uh, I think that's the way we treat it sometimes when we use the word tithe is that we're just looking to fulfill God's minimum standards in giving uh, when there's so much more to that, to, to the idea and the experience in giving. Mm -hmm. And it includes more than just giving our money to uh, the church and giving it through the church. It's, it's uh, I think, being creative and, and learning how to share life with other people in creative ways. Uh, but then also, you know, sharing resources with things that we're passionate about. Right. If you stick to the the 10 percent rule that we have defined for ourselves a lot of times uh, and you never grow past that, then you become legalistic. And it's probably something that God looks at and says, you're checking things off. That's not right. part of worship. That's not a part of experience. Right. And, you know, with for us, with having the opportunity to think about it and and talk about and, and our purposes here, our process here of, of, of growing uh, personally, our spiritual growth, developing our spiritual growth towards service. I think one of the things that's just interesting to me is that we, we will are real quick to evaluate areas of our life in terms of and determine how we're growing. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we're attending church more frequently or Bible study more frequently, or we're reading through the Bible, or we've taken on a, a, a Bible reading plan or challenge. So we have those measurements for other areas of our life. But when it comes to giving, if we are giving, we just get real stagnant with that. Right. And so, uh, you know, one of the things, and, you know, it's, it's hard to get into uh, a lot of personal examples, but uh, what we, one of the things that we started doing was, uh, annually trying to adopt a, an organization that we're passionate about mm -hmm. and uh, adopt one each year. And, uh, and in some cases, we continue with, with an organization, but it keeps that, that conversation of giving uh, and support. Uh, it, it keeps that fresh in our minds, uh, and which is also one of those spiritual growth points for us too, because we do want to be people who are generous with what God's provided for us. Right. And you said at one point, you said, if you're giving, um, I think that's one of the things that, that sticks out to me the most in thinking about this is that if we're not giving, then there's an issue with our spiritual formation. There's something going wow. on there. And, and I think sometimes it's that worry of, well, I can't afford to do 10%. Well, then just start. You don't got to give right. 10%, give something and start to build that, that muscle, that giving muscle and let that expand as you grow. Let God work on that but you're never going to be able to do it until you just start giving, just give that first time. Um, it's kind of like you talk about the, the being able to see what God has for you. It's like, turn on your lights, car lights at night. Oh yeah. You see yeah. Far enough to get safely home, start giving and then let God work with you from there. Right. And I, and I think that's where that, that passage is really uh, encouraging and challenging uh, in, in the way that God speaks to his people in regard to that and covering the purpose of that, giving in the first place, as well as uh, seeing how it's worked out in our relationship to God. So I think, I think all those things are important parts of this uh, journey we're on to understanding that. And uh, I think uh, this Sunday, we'll, we'll kind of continue that thought in really a more practical way uh, about how that applies to First Baptist Church Sweetwater. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed this, Teak, but there's a couple of things on the table at the front of the church. I have. I have noticed. You have, and you've asked me about that. I have. Uh, there's are there two clay pots that will be a part of an illustration that I use Sunday, uh, that uh, we want to kind of to create some imagery for our people uh, leading up to it for those that have noticed it, and I'm sure many that have been there a lot worshiping live with us they have noticed that. Um, and then also don't want to forget that there's also the communion piece there, which we will do uh in two weeks but uh this sunday we'll we want to really think about you know god's call to first baptist church sweetwater uh, we've been asking our people to to pray boldly and uh, not just for themselves but also for the church and uh i believe that if if we were to really place a bold faith in the hands of god that god's going to lead us towards some things that only god can do right and uh i'm really excited about uh, the the opportunity to witness that uh, and the opportunity that I believe our church people have uh, not just to witness it, but to be a part of it because they were willing to give and they were willing to pray and willing to be obedient. And so uh, 
that's kind of where we're headed Sunday. I think it's going to be, uh, you know, another a good uh, sort of a, a mental step for us as we think about uh, our own uh, faith and our our growth in, in learning to be generous people. But just to be clear, the, the communion bread that is up there is not the bread that we will actually use for communion. So don't be worried that, you know, for four weeks this set out there, and we're going to use that. Uh, right. That, that's my attempt at art, Peak. Well, I like it. I mean, it, it sets the stage. It gets you thinking. It looks good. Yeah. Well, it's uh, we, we have used the table to communicate uh, through this series with those elements. And that may be something, you know, we've added several things since we've uh, started this this COVID uh, uh, worship experience. Uh, and uh, that may be another element for us uh, as we uh, uh work through different series from time to time uh, to set the table where uh, we have an object lesson, something to think about. So anyways, uh, more things to come there for sure. Excellent. So anyways, our worship sin 15 on Sunday, we'd love to see you here worshiping with us, practicing best safe practices, or you may want to worship with us on live stream at, on Facebook or YouTube. Either way, we look forward to being a part of your Sunday and we'll see you then. See you then.